All right, today we got a new battery model from Lee Time. Let's open it up. Manual packet, our M8 terminal bolts. All right, and there's the battery. This is their new 12 volt lithium iron phosphate 100 amp max battery. I just noticed up here, it says 150 amp BMS. So this guy can handle more current and I think higher surge current. We can do a max continuous discharge at 150 amps. Wow, you can do a max discharge for one second at 600 amps. <laughs> I wonder if that would start a vehicle. And of course you can do four in series and four in parallel. All right, so let's charge this guy up. All right, he's fully charged. And I've got an idea. Check these out. So what I'm thinking is, we're gonna try to start a car. All right, so we're gonna try to hook this up to my Xterra and try to start it. Now, one thing that's gonna be a problem, the negative and the positive is different on this battery the negatives here the positive is over here and on the lithium battery the positives over here and the negatives over here i'm guessing like just put the battery in upside down like this and just let it kind of set there what do you guys think all right you guys that was super tricky to get on there but it's on as you can see we got the uh, negative terminal on. That's as far as I could get it on. And then we got the positive terminal on the battery too. So let's try to start it up. All right, key in the ignition. Here we go. Oh yeah. It started it. So we finally have lithium batteries that have BMSs in them that are strong enough to have a high surge current. That's really awesome. Now, of course, it's gonna be hard to try to put one of these in your, in your vehicle with the terminals <laughs> backwards. Uh, so you'd have to figure something out there. And uh, also, there's another issue that I've been kind of reading up on these might be really bad for your alternator. I've read some stuff to where uh, these can put too much stress on your alternator and cause it to overheat and fail prematurely. I'm not so sure all the details about it and I don't know if it affects every alternator. So that's something to consider if you're thinking about doing anything like this after I just showed you that it works. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically that these batteries can take so much more current and faster when it's charging, I think that the alternators, are it just puts too much stress on them. But again, I need to read up more on that. And if you guys know about that, please uh, throw it down in the comments and give us some more information. All right, I wanna turn this off and, and try it again. Okay, it's off. Oh, started right up. So I reconnected the original lead acid and I just started it and it feels like it takes longer to start. So I'm gonna do a couple starts so you can compare between uh, when I had the lithium and the lead acid in. And one more. Yeah, it totally feels like it takes more starter time to start with the lead acid. All right, that was definitely fun starting the car with this battery. So now let's go ahead and do a capacity test. I've got everything plugged in and ready to go. I did charge this thing back up to full after we did the starting test. And so let's go ahead and just turn on the inverter. And we're gonna run the AC over here. 
like it was already on. One eternity later. All right, so yeah, that took a little minute for my compressor to come on on the AC, <laughs> but we finally got it going. All right, so pulling 44 amps. No, oh, let's, can we get more? All right, so pretty close to 50 amps, about 47.5 amps there. We'll just let it run with that. Alright, so we are down to 1% left on the discharge test. 99.3 amp hours right now. 1,282 watt hours. We've already, we've actually already exceeded the watt hour rating. Alright, here we come. There it is, 100 amp hours. So we have passed the capacity test and as always we're gonna let it continue to run to see how far it gets all right our inverter is beeping at us so let's go ahead and turn it off and now we have a final result of 103.66 amp hours 1332 watt hours excellent all right, I'm gonna give you guys the technique of how I open almost every battery. I start with a wood chisel. That's uh, a one inch. And I always start right here in the middle of the battery and I just use the chisel to start getting in under this lip because the putty knife, it's not really sharp enough to, to initially penetrate. And then I just bang it until the chisel gets in there. Now that I've got the chisel started, I take the corner of the putty knife, get it in there like that. And then now you can just slide it across now don't get your hand or anything over here because if it slips you're in big trouble see there i'm just breaking this the glue across there we go now we just got to go across this way and you might have to sometimes encourage the putty knife to go like so there we go. All right. Now, basically, you do the exact same thing all the way around. Start in the middle with the chisel. So that was basically the first step, breaking away the glue from all the seams. Now once you do that, you're going to take your putty knife and put it on close to one of the corners here. And you're going to start banging. And see what that does? That starts to separate it. And so basically you're going to do that. on pretty much every corner here. And there we go. So basically don't do this. Opening these batteries is dangerous. But if you feel like 
you know, you want to, then do it at your own risk. All right, so let's open this guy up and see what we got. Ooh, that's a bigger, chunkier BMS for sure. Kind of looks like a double layered. Yeah, it definitely is. It's got multiple layers in it. And it's almost like a stacked BMS because look, we've got wires on the top and we got wires on the bottom. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. What size is that? Oh, it says 10. We got six 10 gauge wires from the battery negative to the BMS. And then we've got four, five, six. 10 gauge from the BMS to the terminal bolt on the lid. And then on a positive, the positive we've got a double something. Feels like six, like we got a double six gauge in there. Ah. All right. The, the things I go through for you guys, finally got it. All right, let's see what we got here. I don't see any temperature probe. I was hoping to see that. But as you can see, the BMS is, yeah, it's like a double BMS almost. There's two PCB boards. There's MOSFETs on this top PCB board and there's MOSFETs on the bottom PCB board. And you can see the wires, there's three wires connected to the top PCB. There's three wires connected to the bottom PCB. Like literally it's just like two, it looks like two BMS is sandwiched, but it's not actually. I can tell it's, uh, it's made to work this way. So it's nothing, nothing sketchy. Yeah, and I think the bummer here is actually going to be we do not seem to have low temperature protection. We have a high temp switch, and that's it. But the construction looks pretty good. Let's see what kind of cells we've got here. So I think I've got a picture of the QR code. I can't see the whole thing. It says zero AEC eight four something something something. So I can't really read the whole thing. Usually the first few characters will let you know the manufacturer. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, like I said, the build quality looks pretty good. There's um, insulation between each cell. Uh, we've got this banding here, and then we've got these plastic corners. We've got the good high density foam all the way around. We got welded aluminum bus bars with the little relief hump in them. We got our BMS, our BMS mounted on a piece of thick fiberboard. Looks like some double-sided tape holding the BMS to the fiberboard and then the fiberboard holding to the cells. Um, that's usually perfectly fine provided that that tape can handle heat and all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't feel like this is going to come off. And I think lastly, I want to put this back together and weigh it. I should have did that before I tore it apart, but we'll put it back together and then we'll weigh it. So as you can see, using that method that I showed for opening it, it doesn't destroy the battery and you can glue it back together and probably not even know it was ever opened. You know, you might have a few little dings, but nothing massive. All right, so let's weigh this guy. And we are coming in at 22.8 pounds. All right, guys, so that's gonna be it for the video. This was a fun battery to play with. I don't get a whole lot of high current capable batteries. I'd like to thank Lee Time for sending this to us for review. And please leave your comments. Always love to hear from you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.